Hey guys, this is Isaiah, and booking it is sorry to say that Matthew's audio quality is bad. He just moved and couldn't find his microphone. Sorry again about that. Now for the podcast. Coming up next, booking it reads, Son of the Bear. Isaiah, why isn't the intro music playing? Maybe you want to recheck your title on the book? No, 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 I got it right. It says Son of the... Just Son... Why does it have a big bear on the cover? Coming up next, book and it reads, Sign of the Beaver. Hey everybody, thanks for listening to this. I'm your humble and eloquent host, Cooper Gobbs. Again, really sorry about last week. Keep the apology part, but basically scrap most of the update part. We are going to release every week still, but it's just going to be a little bit shorter and sweeter. But pretty much everything else from the other episode looks the same. So let's get into meeting our panelists. Joining me today, we have three panelists. Matthew Killingsworth. Howdy. Tanner Lewis. Hello. And Isaiah Rasky. Yo. Yo, gentlemen, how are we doing today? Pretty good. Great. Pretty good. Yeah, it's fun. First time we've been recording together for like... Um, I mean, it's been a couple weeks. Yeah. Yep. Are we all pumped? Yeah, I'm excited about this one. Yes. It was nice having a little break, though, and uh, going out of town. Oh, yeah. How's everybody's respective vacations or staycations? It's good. Till school started. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, I think I just said that I enjoyed it, but... Yeah, yeah. Tana, what about your staycation? It's been filled with school, therefore fun. (laughs) Yeah, hey, I like the enthusiasm there. I like the enthusiasm. All righty, let's get into the book. But first, Matthew, you said that you have some background on the author Elizabeth George Spear. Hit us with that. Yeah, so Elizabeth George Spear was born in Massachusetts on November 21st, 1908. Um, she wanted to be a writer her entire life, but she never started writing until after her college years at Smith College, and also after she raised her kids. In the later years of her life, um, she wrote Sign of the Beaver, as well as Collective Captive, The Bronze Bow, and The Witch of Black, uh, Blackbird Pond, um, of which the last two are Newbery Medal Award winners. Um, also, for her substantial and enduring contribution to children's literature, uh, that was quoted. She received the Laura Ingalls Wilder Award in 1989. She sadly died just five years later, but not before she has left her lasting mark on children's literature. And that's about all I have. Nice. So she didn't write any of these books until after she was like, what, in her 40s or 50s? So yeah, right? after she had finished raising her kids and they had moved out. Gosh, that's, that's pretty cool. So. I wrote this in the script as optional. Do you want to just kind of explain the kind of plot of the book? Let's just do the basic plot. We won't go deep. So basically, actually, Isaiah, why don't you give us the uh, overview of the book? So basically, it starts out with uh, this kid and his dad, and they're out in the wilderness with a cabin. They're, like, building the cabin and getting it ready. And the dad leaves the kid over there to make to take care of it while he goes and gets the rest of their family. How old is this kid? Uh, he's about to turn 13. He's like 13 for the second half of the book. His name's Matt. I like that name. All righty, Tanner. Yeah, this is an interesting book considering uh, all the Indians. Hey, spoiler alert, Matt meets some Indians. Um, what did you think of all of their kind of, I don't know, the, the, the kind of theology of the Indians? How did, what did you find that interesting? What, what, what is kind of that? I thought it was a bit, um, let's say this, slightly disturbing just because it's um not biblically based um religion is that they um practiced and just um how god forsaken it was yeah i mean there's there's definitely some disturbing stuff especially later on we'll talk about so any other opening thoughts guys so isaiah what do you think is the theme of this book like the overarching theme I guess it would just have to be, like, saying that this kid finally is, like, he's turning into a man. His dad's trusting him more. 
So we have yeah, like coming of age story. Yep. Especially this book. Yeah, this is really just a coming of age story of book. So coming up next, we got a new segment called Better Than, Worse Than. I hope you guys were prepared for this. So in this segment, we're going to take this book and compare it to two similar books. We're going to say this book is either better than this book or actually better than this book and it's worse than this book though so who wants to go first okay i i saw the sum earlier when i was reading through the notes so um to start it off i'd say it's better than the witch of blackbird pond which is the other uh spear book that we almost had to read yeah no this is yeah it's definitely better yeah um but i will say another spear book that i think is better than this one um is the bronze bow i think i think the bronze bow is better than this one so i guess i would say that the sign of the beaver is worse than the bronze bow yeah i'm gonna have to agree with matthew on that all right i'm gonna say that this is better than the calico captive which is another one of her books and i think this one's just written better but i'm gonna say this is worse than my side of the mountain that's just a really great kids book i really like that one i i really i really recommend it it's a good read aloud book Anyway, so how about somebody want to try to explain the drastic change that the main character Matt went through throughout the the whole course of the book? Um, I can talk about that. So basically, at the beginning, it starts off him and his dad had just moved from the city, or yeah, like city where he went to school and where they lived, um, more like how city people lived back then, and that's where his sister and his mom and their newborn um, baby brother or sister still are at the beginning. And so they're having to learn how to work like out in the wilderness by the forest, and they're having to cut down trees and build a cabin and start cornfields and start fishing and hunting for food and stuff like that and learning how to use a fire to make different types of food. And so that's a big adjustment for him at the be- at the beginning, but we don't really get to see it because we kind of start off right after he moved from the city. So from that point to the end, after he's met all the Indians and met his friends and um, saved a dog from a trap and killed a bear in part, and uh, by the end he knows all these little tricks of like how to – get different food and how to like make fish hooks and how to set traps and all these different things that he's learned from the Indians. And he also just has so much more experience. He's got like six months of wilderness living experience. He's like a, he's a a 13 year old kid who's already providing for himself and um, living alone in the cabin until the end when he gets a dog and eventually his family comes back, but he lives alone for six months in the wilderness, in the woods. And um, he he just goes through all the trials of that and learns how to provide for himself. Well, not really alone though. Like half of the time, the Indians were there and they taught him all that stuff. That's true, but they didn't live with him. He they just visited during the day. Yeah, I mean it's very drastic the change. I think it's it's very cool to see how he changes. I think it's well written in that way. So, Tanner, you've been asking me to kind of explain. Our, the model of our homeschool program, and this is one of the books that we have to read for that. Do you want to go ahead and do that? Okay, so for all of you listeners that do not know, me, Matthew, Cooper, and Isaiah are all classically homeschooled. We um, uh, will, so for all these books, this book is one of the books that we've had to read for school, and uh, um, uh, we will basically read through this book, and then we will write a persuasive paper on why a character in this book should have or should not have written, um, done something in this book. Um, For all of you who are interested in our school model, you can go to, um, you can look up cc.com or Classical Conversations, and you will definitely find the way that we do school. Yeah, shameless plug there. Yeah. No, it's really cool because, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of the school model is kind of part what inspired us to do this podcast, I think, and just the way we think about books and the the and the light of what we the, the, big, the biblical truth through which we see them kind of thing. So anyway, yeah, make sure to check that out. So if if you were today be put in Matt's circumstances, 
w- w- how scared would you be? I don't know that I'd be scared. I'd probably be nervous, but I don't know. That's a really hard thing to think about. Why, why wouldn't you be scared, Tanner? I don't know. Something just about being away from people that would make it feel more safe. So uh, I think it's just um, uh, having the animals and having to fend off bears and such. That would be the scary part, but I don't know. That would You just kind of enjoy being away, wouldn't you? Yeah, kind of. It would definitely get lonely after a time, as in the book with Matt. I think I think I would enjoy it too, but I think what would scare me the most is my lack of ability to um, create traps and snares out of like random stuff I found in the woods and be able to get food and you know fishing from like hooks that I made out of twigs and worms that I found in the ground. I just don't think I'd be able to do that as well as he does and know it as well as he does and obviously as well as the Indians do. So I would just be worried that I wouldn't be able to get enough food uh, for myself. Um, Matthew, uh, to go on what you were saying though, but you will have to also like learn all that. Like you'll be forced to learn it and be good at it. It's not like he had a choice to be That's bad true. at it. That's true. Yeah, I just mean like right at first. Like I just hope I could, you know, support myself long enough until I could learn it. True. So if you were playing in this scenario, what would be the first thing you'd do? First thing you would do, you, n- and nobody's near, nobody's there. What, what would you do first? I'd probably do whatever chores my dad told me to do right before he left. Yep. Tanner? Yeah, I'd, I agree with them. Yeah? Okay. Well, so later on, a bear gets into the cabin, and he steals all the flour and all the molasses. And Matt risks a beehive in order to steal some honey. He thinks, oh, it's worth a, a few stings. He gets around a hundred. Is some sweets worth like a hundred stings to you guys in this case? Well, for me, no. I don't think it's worth it either. Gosh. Yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah, definitely not worth it. So later on in the book, uh, after the Indians save Matt from getting almost stung to death by some bees, um, the, the, the Indian tribal leader makes his grandson a Tian. Uh, well, he makes Matt teach it. Well, not me. He he offers a, a deal in which Matt teaches a Tian English or how to read and write, and uh, the, the Indians bring him some food. So, if you guys and I've thought a lot about this, not after reading this book especially, but just after after just doing stuff, where would you start teaching somebody to read and write? Uh, besides the alphabet, I have no idea. Yeah. After the alphabet, you teach you teach them you teach them the alphabet. Where would you go after that? Um, I'd probably like teach them. Yep, yeah, and probably just like simple words or simple books with simple words in them. Yeah. Tanner, what about you? Um. Yeah, I'd just try and teach them the way that I was taught, basically, which would be look over someone's shoulder while they're reading, basically, and just watch them as they're going through it. That's how I learned, at least. So. Uh, when you guys heard that we were doing Latin in our homeschool program and it would take us six years to do this, would you want to just run and storm out of the cabin like a TN did after he learned how long English would take? I still do. Except that we don't have a choice. <laughs> yeah, I know. Not that we have a choice, but... All right, so... Just later on in the book, Matt is reading Robinson Crusoe to a TN. And in the book... uh. When he reads about the shipwreck, it says that Robinson Crusoe went back to get some supplies. How humbling to think it was for Matt to hear Atien say he could have done it without the supplies. Like, imagine, you know, Robinson Crusoe's like your hero. He's, you know, like the Harry Potter of back then. How humbling would it be just to hear somebody like, I could do that without the supplies? I don't know if it'd be humbling. I don't, I don't think he was being very prideful in the first place. All he was thinking about all the time was how he wanted a team's respect. And so it probably just made him feel worse. Yeah. So um, I meant to say something earlier. So uh, when, remember the scene where uh, Matt is just meeting uh, the grandfather and a team? Remember that scene? Yes. Yes. So I just got back from debate camp, and on the first day of debate, they were talking about there are two 
you know, three things that you think of when you first meet somebody. So you either you either think of them as a potential enemy, or a potential friend, or a, a potential mate. We won't talk about that today. So when when Matt sees a TN, he thinks of him. He thinks of him as like an enemy, right? Yes. So do you think that this was kind of like a just a normal man to man kind of thing? Like, is it like you know kind of like that? I guess I kind of see what you're saying. Like, he's worried. He's like worried that he's gonna be so much better than him. So, uh, Matt's worried that Etienne is gonna be so much better than him. So he's worried that he won't seem like a man. Yeah, I was kind of laughing. I was like, this is exactly like how a boy would beat another boy. I was like, yes. Because it's like from Matt's perspective, he he finally was trusted to do something big. Like his dad left him to take care of the cabin while he was gone for a few months, and. Um, so he's feeling all good about that, and then he lets a stranger in his house, and the stranger steals his gun, and then so he's, like, mad about that, and then he's doing well after that, you know, he's mo- mostly living off the of fish because he can't shoot anything anymore, and he makes another dumb decision and gets stung by a bunch of bees and gets saved by this guy and his grandpa, and so that guy already seems so much bigger and stronger than him because he's not laying in bed, like, super weakened from a bunch of beast teams. And so when they meet and he just has this straight face and stuff, he just kind of feels uh, bad about himself. Yeah. What do you guys think? Do you think that description of the first meeting was pretty good? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. It just made you feel like you're actually there. Or seeing Yeah, it. so I was watching some writing videos. The guy who was teaching his name is India Wilson. You guys have probably heard of him. He's an author, and he's a Christian author, and he was talking about the goal of an author is to see and to say, and he's saying if the if the reader cannot just feel like they're there, then you failed. And so I think that this is a good job of seeing and saying Mm -hmm. just like that. Okay, well I think we'll maybe we'll do one more question. Robinson Crusoe was actually really similar to this book. Um, you guys have all probably got the basic plot of Robinson Crusoe down, yeah. right? Yes. Imagine Swiss Family Robinson with one man. Oh yeah. So, this is it's really similar, right? Except that, except that there's a I think slave I see, actually, in Robinson Crusoe, and there's not in Swiss Family Robinson. <laughs> right. Well, yes. Yes. So I've never read Robinson Crusoe. We'll read it next year for a challenge. Maybe we'll do it on the podcast then. But I think it's really clever of her to kind of compare Robinson Crusoe to Sign of the Beaver um, as like a main piece of the story. So for the listeners, basically when Matt is teaching a TN to read, a TN doesn't really like it. He only likes when Matt reads Robinson Crusoe to him. Um, but how on a scale of 1 to 10, how creative do you think it was to use Robinson Crusoe as, I don't know, like a main piece of the story here? I don't know that it, I'd call it a main piece. Okay, not like a main piece, but like just kind of a cool plot point. You mean just like having a real book in there? No, just like the just the kind of comparison. Like we compared Robinson Crusoe to Sign of the Beaver, so what, it's similar. Like how how kind of cool is it to kind of see it compared, like in the book actually? How about a six? Matt doesn't give it many points. How about you, Tanner Isaiah? You gonna give us more points? I'll go with a seven. Isaiah's feeling generous today. I like it. Tanner. I'll one up that. I'll give it an eight. Hey. Yeah, I'm probably going to give it an 8. I won't give it a 9. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool, just to kind of compare it like that. Uh, yeah, that is really cool. So, I think that'll be our last question day, and we'll do some donor shout-outs. So, Matthew, if somebody wanted a donor shout-out, well, what would they want to do? all our listeners should know by now, but they would go to patreon.com forward slash book in it and click any of our four donating options. And um, those would give them the various uh, bonus rewards, which they also should already know about. What about our new listeners? Our new listeners. Oh, right. For our new listeners, just do what I just said. Patreon.com forward slash booking it. That's right. Isaiah, hit me with one of our patrons. So one of our patrons is Cooper's grandpa, uh, Van Peppy. Thank you. Shout out to you, Van Peps. Tanner, who's our other person? Lizzie Padilla. Shout out to you, Lizzie. Yeah, Lizzie. Thank you so much. And guys, if you can't 
can support us for whatever reason, though, I would we would really all, really all appreciate if you could. Please, please, on whatever platform you're listening to, rate and review us. Uh, give us a good five star review for us. We would really appreciate it. We put a lot of work into these. Matthew, this was a goodbye. This podcast is for you.